Okay, uh, good afternoon everyone. My name is Adrian Reed, and my presentation today is about a topic that I'm particularly passionate about. And that's about the value that good quality business analysis can add to projects and organisations. Now, as a room full of business analysts, change professionals, IT professionals, we probably all agree unanimously that we can add a huge amount of value in projects, right from the, the time the project first commences, right through to analysis, through to testing phases. But I don't know about you, but certainly in the UK, where I'm from, we sometimes have challenges in terms of getting people to buy into and engage with business analysis. So there are sometimes stakeholders who just don't want to use VAs, they want to speak directly to developers. And we can struggle to actually show the value that we add. So the, the presentation I'm going to give today, it's a case study around a financial services organisation in the UK which is called Scandia. Now, Scandia is part of the old mutual group. And I'm going to tell you about how within Scandia we managed to convert people who were very, very sceptical of the business analyst role and we actually converted them to applicants so they really, really wanted to engage with business, and business analysis and they could see the value that we were adding. So I'll start at the beginning. So I'll give you a little bit of history behind the Scandia business analysis team. If we go back to 2007, there wasn't a centralised BA function at all before 2007. And what we had was, we had a lot of business analysis happening, but it was happening in pockets. So the finance team, for example, had its own business analysts. The marketing team had their own business analysts. And what this meant was, we were getting no consistency. A BA over here would be using perhaps UML, a BA over here would be using different techniques. We were all using different standards, different techniques, and stakeholders couldn't understand that when they, they spoke to a BA over here, they got a very different experience to a BA over here. So the first key milestone in this team at Scandia was in 2007, the later part of 2007. There was a centralised business analysis team created. Now that was the first time that the entire BA function was brought together as one. Now it was a key milestone because for the first time we could start to work on our common processes, our common techniques, and ensure that we were delivering value consistently to our stakeholders. Now at that time, the BA team was within IT, which gave us a bit of a challenge. Because we knew that business analysis isn't just about IT. We can deliver value on organisational change projects, on process change projects, but because of the, the, the location of the team, we, were, we had reporting line into IT. Now in 2008, there was another key milestone. There was a new role established within the organisation which we called the Principal Business Analyst. So to put this in context, what we have now at Scandia is we have a Business Analyst, we have a Lead Business Analyst, which tends to be a, a more senior role and perhaps a, a role that will lead other business analysts. But in 2008 we realised that we need a, a level above that that won't necessarily do a huge amount of hands-on work, but what they will do is they'll work at a portfolio level to spot synergies between big programmes of work. So if you've got business analysts and lead business analysts doing the work, leading the work, you've got an oversight from a principal business analyst you can see that the scope of the overall program will change. Now another key milestone was that we recognised that when we had our team together, we had this team together for the first time, we needed to develop some consistency. And one way of doing this was to put all of our permanent business analysts through training and certification. Now the certification that we chose was the ICEB Diploma in Business Analysis which is now known as the BCS Diploma in Business Analysis. And it's the, the sort of prominent qualification in the UK. Now what this meant was, as a BA team, we had a foundation. So remember, we'd taken BAs from all over the business, we brought them together. This really gave us all a common language. 
we had a common tool set and a common set of techniques that everyone had been taught, so it gave us that benchmark. And another important factor was we encouraged, and we continue to encourage, active involvement with the International Institute of Business Analysis. So whilst we recognised that getting our BA team certified was a really important step, we encourage people to interact with the wider BA community. And the IIBA in the UK, and I know that there are chapters elsewhere in Europe and in Kiev, for example, is a really good way of doing that. Now the next major milestone in our, in our history with BAT was we had a bit of a transition period between 2007 and 2010. We were located in the IT department, but we made a conscious effort to get involved in as many non-IT projects as we could. Now, we knew that IT was an important part of change, but we wanted to show that we can get involved in organisational change, process change. And the real key milestone, 2010, we were moved out of IT and into strategy and change. That was really important because for the first time, the organisation was realising that we can add value across all sorts of project types. And then more recently, in 2011, uh, it was renamed the Change Team, so strategy was, was moved out. And we now have a, a structure whereby we have a centralised change team with a team of business analysts, a team of business architects, a team of project managers, and we help the business to progress its change. Now to show you what that looks like, our organisational structure is broadly like this. So the, obviously the most important part is we have a number of business units within Scandia. And those business units are broadly aligned to different products. So to give you an example, we sell financial services, but one specialises in international uh, products, for example, selling out of the UK. There's another specific UK unit. There's an investment arm, etc., etc. Now, sitting across those is the change team. And the beauty of this is that as a business analyst or indeed as a project manager, you can work beyond these uh, business units. You're not tied to any one business unit. Now, we work closely with our IT relationship and project managers. Because one key thing within Scandia is that all of our IT is outsourced. So we don't have any development capability in-house. So as a business analyst, we have to make sure that our requirements are really robust so that they can be delivered uh, by, our, by our partners. Now it's a good organisational structure and the structure works. But going back perhaps 18 months, two years, we're in a situation where we had some business units really liked business analysis. They got us, they understood why they needed us and they were engaging us on every project. We had a couple that frankly didn't really know what we do and they kind of they kind of knew they needed a BA but they weren't sure why. Now the really dangerous and scary thing was there were a couple of business units that hated us. They had bad experiences with business analysis and with change. And they would actually do everything they could to not engage us on projects. I mean, these guys were going to other suppliers to essentially to avoid us. So we were in a pretty bad place with some of those. So it was, it was a mixture. We had some good, but some bad. So, to give you a sense of some of the challenges we had, talking two years ago, I'll give you some examples of some things that people used to say. And this next one's a real example that happened to me. Um, we were kicking off a strategic upgrade project, one of our core systems. And we had a kickoff meeting where we'd flown people into the UK from South Africa and India. And the meeting's just about to start. And I was a lead business analyst at the time. And I'm there to sort of understand the scope of the project. Just before the meeting kicks off, one of the senior business stakeholders leans into me. He's going to sort of whisper something, so I'm quite attentive. I'm interested in what he's going to say. And he says, um, Adrian, you're a BA. Are you going to be taking the minutes of this meeting? And clearly there's nothing wrong with meetings having minutes. It's a really important part of, of meeting etiquette. But as BAs, we can have so much more than that. You know, we, 
we don't just hear requirements. It's not like we pluck them out of thin air. We have to tease them out. And we, we take disparate views from different stakeholders. We analyze and we record it and play it back. But at that point in time, that stakeholder was thinking that we're scribes. He was thinking that actually business analysts hear what stakeholders say and write it down. So there was a gap in the perception. Stakeholders didn't know what it was that we were doing. Another example, and I'm confident that some of you, probably all of you, have heard this at some point. We don't need lots of analysis, we just need to get going. And at Scandia, we were finding this more and more. Stakeholders were saying, ah, we don't want to write requirements, we don't want to work out what it is we want, we just want one of them, so deliver one of them. And again, what this uncovers is a misunderstanding. People were seeing this as form fillers, as bureaucrats, they couldn't see the value. And finally, another really common one that I've seen in other organisations too, is I already know what I want. Stakeholders who would kick off projects to deliver a very specific thing. You'd have senior stakeholders saying things like, you know, I want this particular system of this particular version, go and deliver it. And of course, as BAs, our instinct is to say, okay, that's a solution, but why do you want that? What are the benefits? What, what are your requirements? There might be other ways to solve it. There might be cheaper, quicker ways to solve it. So again, stakeholders were thinking, you know, what can a BA tell me about my business? So we had a challenge. How do we get the message across that we can add this value? We knew that we needed to build awareness. Within the team, we needed to build awareness of what we do. And we needed to dispel some myths about what people think we do. And this third bullet point here was really key as well. Now, remembering that the team had been brought together a few years ago from different parts of the organisation, we actually had to get it clear in our own mind what we do and what we don't do. Because there are as many definitions of business analysis as there are business analysts. And they're all right. You know, it's, it's horses for courses. Different projects require different skills. But we needed to put a ring around it and say, this is what we do at Scandia. So we approached this from two directions, really. We decided to take a, a top-down approach. So we managed to get time with some of our really senior director-level stakeholders. We got time in their diaries to give a short presentation about what business analysis is. And then we also knew we needed to work bottom up from the ground as well. So we needed to show the value to SMEs and stakeholders. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to share with you some slides which we presented to some of our exec level stakeholders, including the Chief Executive Officer at Scandia, to try and promote the value of business analysis. And essentially, we were trying to convert people from not knowing what a BA is to the more smiley, happy, all-encompassing face that you saw earlier. Now, these next slides, these are actual slides which we used. So, our, our exec within Scandia have seen, seen these slides. And one thing that just about everyone that works on projects agrees with is that a project starts, normally, with an idea, a need, or an opportunity. So someone has a great idea and something needs to change. Now for that project to be successful, it actually has to deliver something. It has to deliver successful change, some business benefit, probably some financial benefit, and it has to be change that sticks. There's nothing worse than delivering change that disappears the minute you walk away. I'm going to go off on a bit of a tangent for a second, but then I'll, I'll bring myself back in. So I want to tell you about how I drew this picture, which you'll see on these next few slides. So I knew that I had to give this presentation to some fairly senior people within our organisation. And I was travelling to London. So I live in Portsmouth, on the south coast of the United Kingdom. And I arrived into one of the main terminus stations in, in London. It's called London Waterloo. And I needed to get to the centre of London at a station called Bank. Now, if you've ever been to London, um, you'll know that there's a really good uh, underground system, a metro system in London. And if you want to get between Waterloo and Bank, 
There's actually a line, a shuttle, underneath the ground which goes from Waterloo to Bank, from Bank to Waterloo, etc, etc. And the journey takes like six minutes. So I arrive fairly early morning and I start to descend down the dark steps into the, the tube station, into the metro station. And it's a hot day and I'm wearing a dark suit and it's getting hotter and hotter and I'm sweating. But I think, you know, it, it's fine, I'll be there soon. And then all of a sudden, I'm faced with something that looks a bit like this. Now, if you've ever travelled in the London Tube, the London Metro in rush hour, you'll be familiar with this. It's horrendous, it's busy. And what you can't see from this photo is, this, is, this isn't on the platform, the platform is over there somewhere. This is a queue to even get on the platform. So I'm waiting there, and the, the queue shuffles forward, and eventually I get on a train, and it, you, know, you know how it is on a busy metro, I'm up against someone else's armpit and sweating, all these sorts of things, but I get there, I get to the other side, I get out of the, the metro station, I'm gasping for air, I'm having to now run to my meeting, I'm a bit late, I apologise to the person I'm meeting. The person I'm meeting turns to me and says, Adrian, it's really interesting. People from outside London always assume that the only way to get between Waterloo and Bank is on the Waterloo and City line. And as a result, every morning, it looks like this. Now the London metro network, tube network, has a number of lines and it has a number of interchanges. And you can actually get from Waterloo and Bank about six or seven different ways. And it looks longer on the, on the tube map, but actually it's shorter because it's less congested and you don't have to wait in queues like this. And I had one of those light bulb moments. I was thinking of this presentation, I was thinking, oh, okay, so maybe a project life cycle is a bit like a metro network, or a tube map as we call it in the UK. So I'm gonna show you my thoughts now on how projects can be depicted as a tube map. And I'll tell you the story which we told the exec in our, in our organization too. So the first line on our tube network here is what I call the foundation line. And this represents all the core skills that any business analyst within Scandia is expected to have and does have. So you've got things on there like facilitation. So any good BA will be able to facilitate a workshop, a meeting. But one thing we were keen to get across is actually, it's not just about projects. If the exec team need to solve a particularly difficult problem, we can help them, we can help facilitate their meetings. We help to shape and structure projects. As BAs, we're really great at helping tease out those ideas and put some structure around them. We can embed knowledge between business units. But one particularly important one there for Scandia, and I think for business analysis in general, is what we call a critical friend. Now, I'm not sure how that trend translates uh, to Russian, but essentially the gist of it is that we, we're the person that will tell the cold hard truth. So we will not necessarily take the first things that our stakeholders say, we'll challenge them in a pr pr productive way. However, as you'll see from the tube map, you can't get from your idea through to deliver change just with the foundation line on its own. So the next line we have is what I call the commuter line. And at Scandia, this line was being used by the Waterloo and City line in my previous example. It was busy, it was congested. We had like 60 BAs in the team all working on this line here. And this line is what many people think of when they think of business analysis. They just see requirements. And if you're lucky, they'll see solution analysis. But before we put projects on that delivery line, there are a number of other things we should be thinking about within organisations. The first is that not all projects require IT change or organisational change. So within Scandia we drew a distinction and we said actually another way of solving organisational problems is to look at continuous improvement. So within our BA function we have specialist lean practitioners for example to help with business process re-engineering, re business process improvement. So we don't have to put all projects on there straight away. But before we even get there, we have what I call the Ladbrokes line. 
And in the UK, Ladbrokes is a betting shop. It's the sort of place you go if you want to play, place a bet on a horse or a football match. And this is very much about understanding the odds that the project's going to be successful. Understanding the risk and the reward. Because I'm not a betting man, but if I was, I'd want to know the odds of the horse that I'm betting on. So we wanted to get across to our executive stakeholders that we can help you. We'll, we won't own the business case, but we can help you understand the benefits that your projects will bring. But before we even get there, we have my favourite line, my personal favourite, which I call the De Bono line. And if you've ever read any Edward De Bono uh, books, you'll know he's a, a famous lateral thinker. He came up with those six thinking hats and these sorts of things. And the De Bono line is where I think as business analysts we can add significant value. In addition to all the other areas, of course. But within Scandia, we weren't being used here as much as we should be. And this is about helping business stakeholders to define the problem. Before they even think about a business case, before they think about writing requirements, it was about helping them to understand the problem they're trying to solve. So a key message when we were presenting to our exec stakeholders was, if you engage us here, you'll get a much better end result here. And really, these first two lines here are about doing the right thing, and then the final two lines there are, are about doing it right. Now we had one final line within Scandia. I'm running a little bit short on time, but if you'd like to know about the final line within Scandia, uh, grab me after the presentation, we can have a chat. So that helped us to convert the top level. So this got, got us a foot in the door. Our exec stakeholders were now wanting to engage us. They understood it, they, they were starting to get it. But we still had this challenge. We still had some business units who, frankly, on the ground level, didn't want to use us, didn't want to work with VAs. So, I took up a challenge. I was assigned one of these business units in particular and asked to work with them and help them to understand the benefit a good VA can bring. Now, what I did was I, I, I sat down with the business unit and I, and I am now seated with the business unit and I help them to understand that, as business analysts, we're there to work in partnership with them. So the earlier they give us sight of projects, the better the deliverables will be. And the first thing I did was I got a slot in their uh, team meeting to explain to them that a good BA can really add value from the initial idea right through to delivery. Now, how did we convert them from skeptics to advocates? Well, there are a few key points along the way. The first thing was, when working at that, that, that ground level with the subject matter experts, with the, uh, the team themselves, understanding the stakeholder landscape became really key. Understanding the worldview of the people on the floor who were doing the day-to-day -day job. Because some people, when we approach them as BAs and start asking questions about their job, start to feel threatened. So it's worth considering that, and that's certainly something we found in Scandia. Another thing which I learned whilst working with this business unit was the benefit of delivering something of value really quickly. So to give you an example, the first week I was down there, I saw they were struggling with a particular process, and I spent probably half a day drawing the process out for them in Visio. I mean, it was a really simple job. But I gave them the process back and they were like, oh wow, you know, we've been struggling to write this down for months and you've done it in half a day. And it wasn't that I was a particularly, it's not I'm particularly good at process mapping, it's just that the BAs would have skill sets that the business don't. And by showing them that, they're more likely to engage us. I pushed to get work on projects up front and within Scandia this is something we continue to do. So we want to get on that De Bono line, we want the early side, we want the strategic work, so that we can really sh help shape it. And ultimately, we wanted to show them that it's easier with a BA than without one. So the business units can try and they can progress projects without a business analyst, but they're still actually doing business analysis whether they know it or not. So the better practice is for them to get a BA with the right skill set in. And it was about nibbling away. So we started small. We took the work we could get within the organisation. But once we showed the value, they'd give us more strategic work. 
So where are we now? Well, I'd be lying if I told you we, we've solved the problem completely. We're still on the journey. But our business units do ask for business analysts. We still have some parts of the business that see business analysis as something to do with IT. We're trying to solve that problem as we go ahead. But now we have access to senior stakeholders. So we can get time with you know, our CEO if we need it, with the, you know, the business unit board, for example. And one of the proudest moments of the BA team was a stakeholder who had been a complete um, skeptic to start with actually came over to uh, one of the team about six months after the team had been in place in that business unit and, and said to the team, do you know what, I see you as a valued part of our business now. So from not wanting us to be working with them at all, they were now wanting us there, they were recommending us and were asking for us in every single engagement. So we, we converted real skeptics to real advocates of the BA profession. So in summary, the way we approached the challenge was to create awareness. Part of the challenge was people just not knowing what we do as BAs. People sometimes knew they needed a BA but didn't know why. So we set the boundaries, we showed them what we do. We approached it from the top down first. We hit the management layer and told them, explain what we do. They bought into it and then we, we, we approached some of the stakeholders on, on the uh, lower levels too. One of the key things was we, we needed to establish credibility quickly. Ultimately, credibility in any role, I believe, is only proved through delivery. So we got in there quick, we showed them the value and we continued to deliver. And finally, something I can't understate is stakeholder management. Understanding the people within the business units, understanding their fears, understanding the good things, bad things within their world and working with them, but working with them understanding their worldview. And in doing that, we were able to convert some of our skeptics to advocates. So I hope you found that presentation useful. Uh, we've got uh, probably about uh, a few minutes for question and answer now, um, but before I do that, I, it would genuinely be good to stay in touch. Uh, I'm sure we'll have a chat out in the coffee breaks and over dinner, but um, do feel free. You can email me. I try to reply to every email I get. It may take me a little while, but, but drop me an email. Um, I have a blog. If you've enjoyed my presentation, I'd encourage you to take a look at the blog and uh, sign up. I, I tend to blog a couple of times a month, so you'll get an email when I blog. You can follow me on Twitter. And one more site I want to mention briefly is www.fragnalysis.com. And the reason I want to mention that is I'm part of a team that have released a whole load of business analysis templates into the public domain. So there's some business analysis templates, there's also a free requirements management tool that's all open source that you can download. So take a look at the website up there and also fragnalysis.com. Okay. What was the last site? Sorry. Uh, Pragnalysis.com. Uh, How do you spell? Shall I see if I can make this work? Um, so I think it's Control 2, isn't it? I'll try the technology. How do I do that? It comes from um, pragmatic analysis, so contraction. Okay, um, any questions? Yeah, you said that you're seeing the problem when people think that a business analyst is it and their IT person. Mm -hmm. And what you uh, said after that business analyst should gain credibility. Mm -hmm. And that business analyst is gaining credibility through the IT delivery. And why are you saying that people should not recognize a VA as, a, as an IT person, mm -hmm. uh, saying that he is the one who provides IT, IT uh, project, <coughs> IT delivery? Mm -hmm. It's a good question. 
So um, what I would say is that as, as BAs, we, I, there's no doubt that we, we work on IT projects a lot of the time. I mean, we, we probably all do. The point was, particularly in, in the organisation in Scandia, was that we were seeing that we were being given IT projects, but there was stuff around the edges. There were, there were all these process impacts around the edges that weren't being necessarily always picked up because we were perhaps being given the, the remit, if the project was this wide, we were be, being given the IT bit in the middle. And really someone needed to look at all the bits around the edge to make sure that the IT bit is right. So without doubt, IT is a really important part of our role within, within Scandi, within the BA team. But it was about awakening the business that that isn't the only application of BA techniques and technologies. Does that answer your question? Or yeah, yes. Okay. Hello, I have also one question. Uh, how do you, what's your attitude to external business analysts? You told that uh, you have a lot of outsourcing departments and uh, this is them who outsource your IT project too. And uh, do they have their own business analysts? That's a good, good question, very good question. The answer is sometimes, but they tend to have um, Business, they tend to have business stroke systems analysts. So that they, the analysis function within the suppliers will be, worried, will, will be concerned with one solution component. So to give you an example, one of our core systems relies on IT components from at least four suppliers. So they'll have, there'll be a, a business analyst within our organization writing requirements across all four of those IT components. But that there will actually need to be someone who knows the IT system pretty intimately to, to understand what that means for the system. So what will tend to happen is we'll write requirements across all systems, but then we'll work with our suppliers and often a, uh, you know, a solutions architect or a systems analyst, but sometimes a business analyst with a supplier to understand what it means for each solution component. Yeah, I get that. And so what you do you accept willingly external business analysts? or you prefer to keep it on your own? It entirely depends. They are very valuable when they're there, often. They are very valuable. But when they are there, the, the important thing is um, to, to get a project to succeed, a whole load of analysis needs to get done. And it sort of doesn't matter where it's done, as long as someone's doing it. So what we do when we have external business analysts is we just we, we, we get together with them and say, right, okay, how can we work together to make sure we're not duplicating effort? And how can we work together to make sure we give you what you need and the project gets what, what it needs? So it's, it's, it does work really well as long as there's a clear line of delineation between here's what we do, here's what you do, and here's where we work together. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Thank you for presentation. It was very interesting. Uh, and uh, my question is: uh, uh, do, you, uh, do you understand right that uh, you have a problem in UK that uh, different people uh, understand the different thing? What uh, should or should not uh, do, business analyst? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We have the same problem in Russia and in uh, these countries. And uh, my question is, uh, what do you think, uh, uh, why it happens, and uh, uh, what we should do to <coughs> put together understanding and to think in the right way what should or, should or, or, or shouldn't uh, do business analysis? It's a really good question, and if anyone has the answer, <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you my view, it's not the only view. I think conferences like this are really key to making that happen, getting business analysts from different areas together to just talk about it. Um, my view is that, uh, probably a little controversially, is that there, there isn't one role of business analysis. I think that as BAs we move around, uh, there's a spectrum, so if you think about it, so to give you an example, a BA on a data migration project is going to have to know the data really, really well. And they're going to be bordering on being a systems analyst, because you just have to be. 
But if, if a BA is working to define strategy for a business unit, they're up this, this uh, you know, a much higher level of abstraction. And I think what we do well as BAs is we work well at, at those different levels, so we can delve right down into a problem or, or the data, but we can abstract ourselves and look at the bigger picture. So I think there is no one definition, and I think if we, if we ask everyone here to write down a de definition of a BA, we'd write down different answers, but I think they'd all be right. All of us are right, but it's just different perspectives. So I probably haven't answered your question, but it's a very good one. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> promoting it to the, the senior level um, exec. So it, we didn't go into that level of detail. Now what we do on actual project engagements is we create, um, we often talk about roles and responsibilities. So when we actually take a piece of work on, we say, right, okay, do you know what, we can deliver, we think we can deliver this piece of analysis work in, say, three weeks. But what we'll need in order to do that is we'll need one of your subject matter experts to do this, you know, this piece here. Because maybe a subject matter expert and actuary wants to create a model or something. So what we do is, is we, we're very transparent about saying, we join the dots, but we don't come up with the answers. We, we, we work with people to, to kind of gather different viewpoints and we synthesize. But the worst case scenario can be a project where people won't play. They, they just won't, they haven't got time. So we, we put that up front and say, you know, we need X hours of your people's time to make this project work. Does that make sense? Yeah, we can talk after, exchange tips. <laughs> thank you for Okay, I think that's it, so thank you very much. Thank you.